So this next video will cover youth ages six to 12. Um, so, you know, old enough to talk and kind of become more independent, but not quite teenagers. So some common problems for this age range, again, are ADHD, ODD, which is oppositional defiant disorder, um, we talked about in the previous video, conduct disorder. So that's more of refusing to do things that adults ask, um, being a little vindictive, maybe breaking things when they get upset. So some more severe behaviors, um, PTSD or trauma from some event that has occurred and anxiety and depression. That's when that can start to kind of pick up. Um, so some signs of distress are not able to complete tasks, starting to become very forgetful. So um, things out of the ordinary. So for ADHD, for example, kids can be forgetful. Um, and that's just one of the symptoms of ADHD. But if your kid doesn't have ADHD or ADD and isn't generally forgetful and starts to become forgetful or withdrawn, that's a sign something else is going on. Um, again, just like toddlers and pretty much any age, sleeping too much or too little is a sign that something is going on. Um, becoming isolated, withdrawn, irritated, or easily upset can be a sign that, you know, something's going on with your child's mental health. And then just refusing to listen to parents, teachers, or other adults um, are all symptoms that, you know, of either a mental health disorder or that something related to their mental health is going on that needs to be addressed. So ways that parents can help manage these symptoms are to talk through what is going on and trying not to judge. So if your child has a concern um, and you don't think it's a valid concern, that is fine, but you don't necessarily want to point out that they're wrong. You wanna validate their emotions and feelings. So something that they're worried about or depressed about might seem extremely insignificant to us as adults and as parents, but your kid doesn't, doesn't feel that way. And it's hard for us to remember how we felt as kids and these little things that we don't recognize are important make a huge difference in your kid's life. So it's important to validate your kid's emotions when they bring these things up like, oh, I know that you're upset about that, that sounds upsetting, or I can see why you're feeling this way. Um, and trying not to be judgmental and saying, oh, you shouldn't feel this way, or I don't know why you're upset by this, it's not a big deal. It might seem like that's helpful, but in your kid's mind, it's not, it's judgmental and it makes them think you don't understand them. So validating your child's emotions and feelings and talking through without judgment can be super helpful, especially at this age, six to 12. Um, picking your battles can also be helpful. So when your kid is throwing a tantrum or um, does something wrong, if you try to address it, it might cause more problems and you should be able to address these things, but you also have to look out for your own mental health. So sometimes it's important to recognize what, what is worth bringing up and talking about um, in terms of negative behaviors and what is just not worth addressing because of your own sanity. And that is fine, and that's okay to do as parents. Um, it can be really helpful to help your child manage stressful emotions in more helpful ways. So a lot of times, especially in instances where kids start throwing tantrums after the age of four, like I had talked about. So if they're still throwing tantrums in this age range, um, that's a really good indication that your kid might not know how to manage their emotions in helpful ways. So talking to, to them about these things can be helpful for them. Um, when you feel stressed out, what are some things you can do to bring your stress level down? When you're angry, what do you do? Um, is that helpful? When you are upset with someone or about something, how do you calm yourself down? And some good ways to do that are to exercise. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, anything bigger as going to the gym or anything. It can be going outside for a 10 minute walk. Um, doing some push-ups in their bedroom, uh, 
going to a sports practice, things like that, playing basketball with some friends, um, regulating activities. So that can be um, deep breathing exercises, um, something repetitive. So coloring, drawing, those can help kids regulate. And then some mindfulness practices. So going on YouTube and searching um, guided meditations, mindfulness for kids, and they can sit down and actively listen and go through some of these mindfulness exercises that can help manage, you know, negative emotions. And then the other thing that I like to point out to parents that is really helpful are the three R's. So regulate, relate, and reason. Um, When your child is escalated, whether they are upset, angry, or frustrated, um, their brainstem is dysregulated and our brain works from the bottom up. So when our brainstem is dysregulated, we are not able to have a rational conversation with our kids. Um, So one way to help them regulate is to get them to do something repetitive. So whether that's, you know, walking, moving um, with your kid, I um, think coloring is a good one. So when they're upset or frustrated, getting them to regulate a little bit first and then relate to them by saying, I understand how you're feeling or I can see why you're feeling this way will help them get a little more connected to you. And then you can reason with them and talk through what's going on. Um, Whether that's, you know, telling them what they did was wrong or helping them calm down from whatever was making them upset. Um, Following that regulate, relate, reason can be super helpful in these situations. So um, that is the end of this video. And um, my next one will cover teenagers. Thank you.